Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm excited about today's topic. We're going to talk about the science of self-healing. I have Dr. Sharon Stills with me. You know her already. I've been on her show. We talked about you have to feel it to heal it. So I'm finally glad to introduce her to you. If you are finding this on the podcast, we did do a video. Come on over to jjfilzanes.tv so you can meet Dr. Sharon. And of course, if you're here on YouTube and you've searched and either Dr. Sharon or some of the things in the bios that resonated with you and you don't know me, this is my show which means I'm going to talk. So if you don't like me, totally cool. Dr. Sharon, where can they find more of just you if they don't love me? <laughs> Hi, JJ. It's nice to be here. <laughs> uh, you can find me just Dr. Sharon Stills, Bioregulatory Bio Medicine Institute, where BRMI dot online. That's the nonprofit I'm involved with that I host the podcast for. But for my personal work as a physician, just drstills.com or Dr. Sharon Stills, anywhere you want to look. Perfect. Uh, so we're in my office, my new office for the first time. And I realize I'm using a camera that makes it look like when I'm looking at you, I'm looking in the opposite direction. So mm -hmm. for anyone who's watching this video and wonders what, if it looks like I'm looking away from her, I flipped the camera um, because I'm just still trying to figure out this space. If you could only see the crap that's around me right now in this office. Uh, I haven't quite gotten through it yet. So, um, but welcome. I'm excited that you are the first that I'm recording since the construction. And uh, and I'm excited about our topic today. So you have a, a podcast called The Science of Self-Healing. And I want to get into why you started it and and going into bioregulatory medicine. But I want to go back and just do a little bit of a, your story, your story of becoming a naturopathic physician and being a physician and being in you know, being a physician for over 20 years and the kind of people that you work with and why, like what lights you up? I know menopause and doing it differently and your second act lights you up, but what could you tell us a little bit about your kind of how you got here? Hmm. Well, there's so many different like branches on the tree that got me here. And interestingly enough, I was just sick myself and I had this other epiphany of, you know, we talk about, oh, we're the wounded healer. And a lot of physicians, especially in my line of work in the natural realm of medicine, are wounded healers. We have our, we have our own story and then we heal ourselves naturally and we want to share it with others. But I really got this like onion layer peeled off because all of life and our journey and our growth is this peeling away. I don't know that we ever actually arrive. We just get closer to the core of the onion. And that kind of really came to me just a couple of weeks ago when I was lying in my fever bed that, you know, I really like there's these wounds from childhood, from past lives that really put me on this path of becoming a physician and wanting to heal and wanting to heal a different way. I, I grew up in a house where I was the youngest of three, but really four. I didn't know that my parents had had a baby, their first baby, and she died when she was um, six weeks old. So my sister had spinal meningitis and this never got healed. So yes, so I had a sister who died when she was young. And so that's a huge trauma to go through as a parent. And I, I run read somewhere that being born after the death of an elder sibling is living hell. And I thought, hmm, that that's interesting. And I, I think what I've learned from that now is that yes, my parents had such trauma around this and you know in their generation they didn't go to somatic healers they didn't process it out actually their way of dealing with it was not was burying it not talking about it i didn't even know she existed till i was much much older and i um so i feel like because they went through that when i was sick as a child i would get yelled at i would get in trouble for being sick and i would hide it and it was never that you, you think of a lot of people who end up like I sometimes see patients who are chronically ill and part of that is because when they were younger that was the only time they got attention that was the only time they got love and I was actually the total opposite and so I've been doing some self-healing around that issue as far as I've been doing some EMDR and tapping and really going back and so 
I, I was just ill and then I got better and then I got ill again. And maybe it was to give me a chance to put into practice what I had just EMDR'd out. And so I did, I really was able to surrender. It was maybe the first time in my life that I really just let myself be sick. I wasn't mad at myself. I wasn't depressed about it. I just was with it. And so it was a very healing process. And so when we talk about self-healing, it, it's on so many different levels and we can talk about all of those. So that's kind of a, um, a very hot on the press topic for me right now. So that's my answer. Usually I talk about how I was very sick as a child and had asthma and allergies and hospital stays and overweight and depressed and PMS and addictions and so on and so forth and healed myself when I discovered natural medicine and I had my children, I had, they were sick and there was no internet, there were no podcasts back then. And so I had to figure out how to heal them naturally. And so I actually went to school to naturopathic medical school to become a pediatrician because I wanted to help parents because I had spent hours just trying to like find books or speak to people in person about how to heal my children naturally. And I thought there must be so many other parents out there struggling. I want to help them with what I've learned because it wasn't so easy as just putting in a Google search. <laughs> and so that's why I went to med school and I focused on pediatrics. And I also focused at a side focus on psychiatrics because my older brother that I grew up with, he committed suicide in his early 30s. And so I wanted to kind of understand the psyche more and help in that realm. And the truth is, if you're treating anyone, you really can't avoid psychiatrics or psychology or the mind emotional complex because it's so tied in together. So that was what I studied in school. And that's what I did all my rotations on. And then I opened up a clinic and then a cancer patient strolled in my doors, like the seventh patient and had a uh, pancreatic cancer, which we know is, quote, a death sentence. That's what we're told. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I have never, um, I've never seen a cancer patient before. But he was this, he was in, in his, well, time I thought he was elderly, but he was only in his late 60s, which isn't so elderly now, 21 years later. And I said, look, I've, I'll be honest with you, I've never treated cancer before. And but I do have a philosophy, I have a set of ways I think about how the body heals. And I'm happy to apply those to you. But not that I make guarantees, but I'm certainly not making you any guarantees. Like I, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And so long story short, he ended up being cured, healed, however you want to call it, the cancer was gone. And he lived another 10 years and he died of an unrelated, it was like some calcification that was never addressed in one of his arteries. And so he didn't die from the cancer and he got to walk his daughter down the aisle and live another decade and have lots of meaningful life. And what was interesting was he was a very religious man. And I truly believe that that was a piece because he had such a deep connection that when patients come to see me, I ask, do you have a connection, a spiritual connection? Do you believe in a power higher than yourselves? And it could be the moon, the stars, the sun. I, I, I'm not really that concerned. I don't really care what your religion is. But when you have that connection, when you have that belief, I really believe it helps you to heal. And so that kind of started my journey into becoming a naturopathic oncologist um, because word spread very quickly at his church. They even brought me there and prayed for me and just a nice little Jewish girl at the Pentecostal church being prayed for. <laughs> and so um, that was kind of it. Just, and what it really did for me as a young physician, because like I said, he was the seventh patient in my brand new practice. It really just reminded me one, like the universe will send you what's yours, what you need to learn from, what you can handle, what you can deal with, and that it doesn't really matter the diagnosis so much. It matters the human being and the processes and how the body works and how energy works. And so I, it, it really changed as a young physician, it really changed the way I grew up as a thinking doctor and how I practice. And then the, the women's health piece also kind of just randomly came with a 
patient coming in with Suzanne Summers' new book about bioidentical hormones. And if you've heard me speak before, you've heard me say I like was a little taken aback that Chrissy, the dumb blonde from Three's Company, was doling out medical advice. But open mind, I said, give me the book. Let me take a look and listen. And I read the book and was like, oh, Chrissy actually knows some things here. She's got it going on. And I can even add to that with my medical training and so forth. And so I helped this woman with what she asked for and the bioidentical hormones. And uh, her husband sent me flowers. She told two friends. He told two friends. And so that kind of bloomed as well. And so um, those two things started to become my specialties. And I don't really like to say specialties because I treat everything and everyone from allergies to autoimmune disease to I can't figure what out I have disease and I've been to 17 doctors because again it's like that that cancer patient describes it so perfectly that it doesn't really matter what the disease is it matters what's going on with you it matters what's going on physiologically energetically spiritually what's in the way what's not present and so I always laugh because we get a lot of inquiries. Can Dr. Stills treat this? Can Dr. Stills treat that? And I, I, I'm, you know, my assistant, I'm like, she's like, I have to ask you. I'm like, I know, but you know, I can treat anything. So when you really look at the body holistically, then it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't matter because it always blows my mind that a gastroenterologist who treats your gut and then you say, oh, by the way, you know, I'm also having headaches and they're like, well, you better go to the neurologist. And how like mainstream medicine is just really piecemealed and they forget like, you know, the, the lung and the hearts, like they they share the upper, upper jaw and traditional Chinese medicine, we would say they share the same cavity, like all the ex extracellular matrix, which we'll talk about, it's connected to it all. So how could you possibly expect to heal someone if you're not paying attention to everything? My audience has definitely heard this story a couple of times and I'll keep it brief, but that's kind of when I went, when I was starting out as a personal trainer in New York and I went to, I don't even know if it was a regular physician or if it was somebody who specialized in bone. I, and I had had like a little bit of knee pain, but I knew it wasn't bone. And, uh, and he's like, well, let's take some x-rays. And I wanted an MRI. And he was like, no, let's do some x-rays. I'm like, but it's not bone. Like nothing happened. I didn't fall. Nothing fell on me. I didn't break any bones. Why are we doing an x-ray? And, uh, you know, and looking at clients that I'd had over the years, understanding biomechanics and physics and looking at like taking the knee, which is a, a hinge joint, and then not looking at the hip and the ankle, which are ball joints. And, and those joints direct what happens to the knee. Like the knee has, the knee is a resultant. It doesn't decide to do anything. It's what happens above and below it, but nobody's treating the stability of the ankle joint or the stability of the hip joint. We're looking at just the knee. We're scoping the knee. We're replacing the knee and no one's looking at how the knee works. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how is this not, how is this possible that we're missing this? But just like you described, there are so many specialties within allopathic medicine and and it does definitely has its place and there are definitely some times that you can get you know based on your own physician and doctor uh hopefully you can find out some information but when you look at the body and i love what you said about the cancer patient i'm just going to treat the body i'm going to treat it and uh, you know in the emotional realm when i'm dealing with clients i talk about what's out of balance it's not a right or a wrong it's what you're good at and what you're afraid of the things and then how do we balance that out, not because I want you to do the opposite all the time, but because it's about that energetic balance that, and being able to, and not being afraid of, and not overplaying one side versus the other, both for, you know, neural pathways, as well as our neurological system in general, like holding emotions. So I want to know, I'm sure everybody else does too, what you did with that cancer patient. Like, what are some of the things that you, and I, I guess, would this be considered the science of self-healing? Like looking at um, what things are either out of balance or what kind of general, you know, tests of the body, regardless of the diagnosis that we're starting with. Yeah. So let me give a definition maybe first of bioregulatory medicine, because a lot of people have heard of functional medicine or alternative medicine, or maybe they have an MD who, you know, dabbles in alternative medicine or is an integrative doctor. That's a common term. And I'm a naturopathic physician. 
Um, so we we are the actual uh, holistic doctors. We're trained that way. So we like to think, you know, when there is an integrative MD, it's like, oh, they're coming to dabble in naturopathic medicine <laughs> because that is our philosophy and what we do in bioregulatory medicine. As I said in the beginning, what belongs to you finds you uh, belongs to me and found me early in my medical school experience. And so I was lucky enough to get connected with physicians over in Switzerland and Germany and work for a company that was uh, importing over the isopathic remedies and changing the terrain. And so I learned like naturopathic medicine on steroids because I truly believe that what they do over in Germany in certain things, such as chronic illness and cancer and autoimmune type of issues, uh, Lyme disease is eons above what we do here, even from a naturopathic standpoint. And so, um, so when I look at someone, yes, I do do functional medicine testing. I do do homeopathy. I do do herbs, but I, I kind of step back and just look at the whole body. So when we talk about the science of self-healing, one, we have to remember that the doctor's not going to heal you. So even me, like patients come to me and they come with the mindset of allopathic healing, but they're like, but I'm going to do it naturally. So I'm going to go see Dr. Stills. She's going to give me an herb. And it's like, well, maybe, <laughs> but you're going to have to be an active participant. There is no, I'm like hanging out up here telling you what to do. You're the one who lives with your thoughts. You're the one who makes the choices of what does or doesn't go in your mouth, how you sleep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I can help guide you and I can help look at it from a large perspective, like something. So with bioregulatory medicine, we're looking at different planes of healing. We're looking at the biochemical, but we're looking at the spiritual. We're looking at the energetic. We're looking at the anatomical. And so the first thing I do when I look at someone is to see, are they regulating? Where are the blockages? And so we can call them focal infections. We can call them mochloses, which probably don't have a great German accent, but that's a German word for blockages. But what we need to do, so we're so used to going to see a holistic doctor and being told, you need CoQ10, or you need more B vitamins, or you need to take gluten out of your diet. And you may need to do all of those things. But we need to look at the system first. We need to look at how the system is regulating. So for example, if you have a mouthful of toxins, be it um, cavitations, which is infection in the gum or root canals or amalgams or titanium implants or gum disease or galvanic currents because you have too many different metals in your mouth, then it doesn't matter what we do. We have this huge major blockage. And so patients are often surprised. They come to see me and I'm like, nice to meet you. Take your case. Now you can about face. We got to get you over to the dentist. Let's get your mouth cleaned up so we can actually start to heal the body. And it's kind of like, whoa, what? I don't want to go see the dentist. I just want to take an herb. <laughs> but if we truly want to regulate and self-heal, we have to help the body get rid of what's in the way of that process. And unfortunately, at this time and progression of our society, there's often a lot in the way. Um, that's why like when I use a homeopathic remedy, it's a lot easier to use with an animal or with an infant because they don't have layer and layer of emotional toxins and physical toxins and biochemical toxins and in, um, invisible toxins like Wi-Fi. And so we have to clear a lot. So we need to get a clear as clear as we can get because we're exposed to, I can't even count how many toxins. We're exposed to so many toxins before we're even born, just through, you know, in the womb and through the cord blood. And so we we are kind of swimming upstream at the get-go. And so we really have to help ourselves, support ourselves to empty that bucket as much as we can. And so we all have different constitutions and bioregulatory medicine also really is the only field of medicine 
um, because it encompasses like traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine and isopathic medicine, where we're really looking at constitutions because my medicine may be your poison. And what I need for medicine, maybe I need 10 apples and you only need one. So we're very different. Some of us have stronger constitutions. That's like the grandma who's on the porch rocking and smoking her butts and drinking her gin and she's 110 and never gets sick and feels great as opposed to someone who doesn't have such a strong constitution like myself, like many of the patients I see where, you know, someone looks at you the wrong way and your whole body is like, ah, <laughs> you know, so we, we all have different buckets and some of us have big buckets, some of us have little buckets. And then we have to look at the spigots on those buckets. Is our lymphatic system flowing? Is our bile flowing? Is our, are our bowels moving? Are we, you know, our kidneys processing and filtering? Are we breathing? If we're a menstruating women, woman, are we having a normal cycle every month and excreting? That's another way we detox when we're a menstruating woman. And so we have to look at all these amunctories, these elim eliminatory organs, our skin. And so we, there's a lot that goes into healing. And so self-healing, there's a lot of things you can do for yourself. A lot of lifestyle things, a lot of at-home therapies. I was, before we came on here, I was out getting my, my son, get my healing rays. So there's one of my favorite things that I say, <laughs> one of my self-proclaimed favorite things that I like to hashtag is not all medicine comes in a bottle. And so, and, you know, I can't show you my cabinet now, but like, I take a lot of supplements, so I'm not preaching. You would think that I might be preaching, oh, just breathe your way and sun your way and sleep your way to good health, but it's more complex than that. So yes, supplements play an important role in how we heal, but we have to get away from that mindset that healing is just taking supplements or, the, or even that healing is just eating a good diet because healing is very complex and it's very multifactorial. And it's also dependent on each person. So like that cancer patient I brought up in the first place, he had it going on. He was in a happy marriage. He had a loving family. He had an active church life. He was pretty blessed in that emotionally, he was, he was in a good space. It wasn't a huge part of getting him healed. However, that didn't necessarily need to be the case. And so everyone is unique and, you know, it's different for everyone. That's why it's so important, like as a physician, that I really take the whole gestalt of who you are as bioregulatory medicine. We're really looking at everyone because for someone else, you know, I have had patients who it was the total opposite. They show up with a breast cancer and it's a year post-divorce and they're angry and they're hurt and they're betrayed. And for them, the the leading thing we need to work on is more processing that rather than making sure their vitamin D levels are optimal. Not to say that optimal vitamin D levels aren't important, but it, it's it's weighing how are we going to, what's the window in, what's the most important thing? That's one of the things I do as a physician that I credit a lot to my success is that I really can take in a patient's case and kind of see and know where we really have to focus and what's, because, you know, we look at like the work like Joe Dispenza is doing and there's some real amazing miracles going on there. And do they, are they really miracles or are they just, we're so not used to it that we call them miracles, but we all have that capability, but we all to heal, to use our mind, to use our thoughts, but it depends where we're coming from. And we have to remember we are physical beings. We do have these vessels. They need to be loved on. Sometimes that is our journey here, learning how to love the physical vessel. <laughs> and so it just really differs for everyone. So when people call, and if it's not the question, can she 
cure my high blood pressure? Does she work with high blood pressure? Does she work with colon cancer? It, the answer to that is always yes, but then the next question is often, well, how does she do that? And there is no answer to that because she does that many different ways because what you bring to the table, what you bring to the equation dictates. So I always tell patients, you and 10 of your girlfriends can all have migraines and you decide we're going to all go see Dr. Stills. And then you all go see me and then you meet for lunch the next day. And you're like, wait a second, why didn't she give me that? Or why are you doing that? Or And so, and oh, wait, yeah, we all have this or five of us have this. And so there can be overlap, but bioregulatory medicine is very individualized because we are all unique individuals. I think it's fascinating. And I would say, well, as a, as a person who's like, hmm, I wonder if you can help me with X, Y, and Z. Of course you could. Um, but I'm wondering how, uh, what is like, what's that intake? Like, is it a million pages? Is it three hours <laughs> long or is it, or is it partly intuitive for you? And is it, do people, I know you said it's different and I, and I would, I do the same with people just on the emotional side of like, where do we start? Cause not everybody necessarily needs to start in the same place or focus on the same thing. Are, are there any standard blood work standard, you know, journal writing for your food or like what would be some of the standard things someone you would look at for those 10 different people with the migraines uh yeah there uh, there's a big intake um there's forms and then there's to me what's the most important and i learned this back many years ago in naturopathic medical school is the first hour and the first hour is sort of more for me than you i think a lot of patients expect a lot they want to go over their blood work. They want to do this. They want to do that. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything except talk to you and take your case because yes, there, I mean, at this point there is definitely an intuitive and there there's all my experience, but in the taking of the case, that's where if you listen, and I think that's where we're, excuse me, where we're lacking so much is that we're not used to being listened to. I remember I went and did a, and I will answer your question, but I remember I did a preceptorship with an osteopathic physician when I was in med school and I was so excited. We're going to touch the patients and cranial sacral. And he was like with the patient for like three and a half minutes, didn't touch them, barely talked to them and just gave them a script. And I was like, what happened? And he was like, well, this is what we do. This is how, you know, I got to see 10, 20 patients in the next hour. And, and I thought, well, you're never going to heal a patient because they're not deficient in that medication you gave them. And so it really depends. So I do like to, to answer your question about like testing. Yes. I like to get full. And when I say full, I mean, full blood panels on all my patients, but that doesn't happen. That happens after the intake. It's not part of the intake. I like to do thermography scans, which is a regulation test. So how does your body heal? How does your nervous system function? Because we have reflexes where the organs, the major organs, we can get a read on them through, um, the reflex through the nervous system as to how they're responding. And so in a thermography scan, you come in, you're prepped, you're in a room that's temperature control between 68 and 72 degrees. I take temperature readings all over your body. Then you get a stress to the nervous system. You have to stand there for 10 minutes um, in the cold in just your underwear. And then I come back in and I take the same readings and we can see how did your nervous system regulate? How are you self-regulating? Because by the time we get to blood work and elevated liver enzymes, we're in pathological. But when we're doing a thermography, we can see things before we get there. We can see that the system is starting to deregulate. <laughs> she showed me a thermography picture. <laughs> and so it's, it's very, very important baseline. Um, and then it really depends if I'm working with someone going through menopause, I'm always doing 24 hour urine testing. I'm doing heart rate variability analysis. Sometimes I'm doing, um, microscope work. It really depends on the person and what they need. And it's a, it's a journey. So in the first hour, when I take your case, like 
if you need, I had a new patient the other day and very unregulated, agitated nervous system. And by the time I was able to get a word in towards the end of the hour, <laughs> I was like, let's just breathe. And actually your next appointment, we're just gonna breathe together because it doesn't matter what I give you. I can't give you stuff into a dysregulated nervous system. You're not gonna heal. Just pushing the can down the road, we're wasting everyone's time and I don't wanna waste your time and I don't wanna waste my time. So it really just depends what's, how severe the illness is and how much you wanna be. I'm a very big believer in prevention. So like I had a patient the other day who just came because she wants to stay well. And I was like, oh my God, let me hug you. I'm so excited because we, my dream, like my dream of a better world is where patients wake up and they're like, I'm feeling freaking amazing today. So I'm going to call Dr. Stills because I want to keep feeling this way. But that doesn't happen. We feel amazing and we just keep doing what we're doing. And then we start to feel like crap. And then we still keep doing what we're doing. And then maybe we band-aid it. And often we don't end up at my office or a physician like me till our body has really been like, nope, you're, you're not going to be able to function anymore. I'm going to bang you over the head with symptoms until you pay attention to this. But we healing and health is a constant. To me, it's not something you do for a month. It's not something you do just because you don't feel good. And then you get, you know, it's something we are committed to and constantly dancing with. And sometimes maybe we're dancing a little faster and we're, you know, we're going to dance class five times a week. Sometimes we're only going once a week or once a month and we're, we're not, it's not at the forefront, but it's something we should have a relationship with, in my opinion, of healing and what are we doing and what are we preventing? It's a lot easier to prevent than to reverse. And yes, I can help people reverse disease, but it's a lot easier to prevent. Well, it just is another reason and way that we're similar because I took my parents, um, must've been 2018, 2017, my last book came out. So when they were here for my book launch in 2017, I took them and had complete blood work, like a super panel, like a $6,000 panel for both of them. Um, took them to the physician I was working with, with bioidentical hormones, took them to the nutritionist, took them to the acupuncturist, took them to the clearing emotional inherited DNA healer. Um, and the doctor said to me, JJ, your parents are healthy. And I said, I know. I want to keep them that way. That's why we're here. I want to get out ahead of things. I don't want it to be that we're trying to fix something that got broken because nobody was paying attention. Uh, now, of course, that was me and I can only do so much for them. They have to be the ones to decide that they want to keep it up, right? But at least I sort of threw my hat into the ring and said, here's what I think would be the best thing for you guys to keep your health optimal versus waiting till something breaks. So uh, I'm on the same page. I'm this why one of the reasons why I do the show and we we dance between, you know, health and emotion and um, relationships and everything in between because it's it's living that full life and having all of the things working, having the fun and the passion and the joy and the health and they're all connected. So um, let's talk a little bit about bioregulatory medicine again, but this time I want to, and you've mentioned so many different things, Ayurvedic medicine and homeopath, homeopathic medicine, Chinese medicine, your diet, um, getting things that aren't in a bottle, uh, supplements are important, but so is the sun for vitamin D. What other kinds of things, because you have a podcast and people have heard me on your podcast, but I want to talk a little bit about on the science of self-healing and you also have uh, the bioregulatory medicine institute. Is that what, and it's a nonprofit and it's to basically empower people, teach them about healing. And I know that you had a conference last year because it was at the same exact time of my Awaken Your Dream Life, otherwise I would have come. And I know some physicians that went and I heard about certain new water filtration, but like what kind of things could we expect to find on your podcast? And if people start to follow you with some of this science of self-healing and bioregulatory medicine. So my podcast, we just had our hundredth episode too. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you will find a variety of things and you will find uh, physicians that aren't just doing functional medicine. So we're really looking at, there's a lot of dentists, biological dentists, 
I've interviewed, we talk about neural therapy, which is a technique from Germany that is part of bioregulatory medicine. When I talk about clearing the field, clearing scars and resetting the nervous system is a big piece we do that's not really a part of any other kind of medicine. Uh, we talk about emotions. We talk about, I mean, I, I honestly, I started the podcast when COVID happened because I just wanted to have a voice and I was very frustrated about what I was seeing going on. And so I said, this is going to be like my passion project. And so I have interviewed a lot of really, we don't filter. We have been very fortunate. We haven't been censored. And so we talk a lot about COVID and things of that nature and things that you might not hear elsewhere. So we really talk, it's a wide variety of things, but it all plugs into bioregulatory medicine. Um, and so it usually when people, so it's either physicians are listening or healthcare professionals or very educated lay people um, who are on a journey because they're just seeking and they haven't gotten what they needed, say, from functional medicine or even naturopathic medicine. And then our website is totally free. It's brmi.online. And it's like, you, you know, you could just go down any rabbit hole you want and you could live there for your life and probably still not read everything. So <laughs> there is just information on diagnostics, on therapeutics. The podcasts are all there. We have a free um, bi-monthly e-journal if you get on our email list that we send out. We do a lot of great stuff. It's kind of a group of us that studied over in Switzerland and Germany. You know, we've known each other for 20 plus years and um, are just really committed and dedicated to making bioregulatory medicine a household name. I love it. And do you work with people because obviously uh, you're in Arizona and uh, people are listening all over the world, not just in the United States. So do you work with people telemedicine? Yes, I, I've act, I'm OG telemedicine. I, I've been doing telemedicine for like 11 years. So I know a lot of people switched over with COVID, but I've been doing it. That was kind of my self healing. So I had a very successful clinic on the East Coast and I walked away from it because I, people thought I was like nuts and, but I was like, no, this is like the next stop. This is the next um, page or chapter in my journey. Cause I think of life as a book and I, I want to have interesting chapters and I kind of see each decade as a, a new chapter. And I, I needed to shift what I was doing and how I was doing it. And I was personally burnt out to a degree. And also I, I have a, I have a wanderlust. I love to travel and I wasn't able to really travel and experience life the way I wanted to when I was tied down to my clinic. And so I did, I shifted, I went to telemedicine, I figured it out. I traveled extensively and funnily enough, I'm planning on opening another clinic here now because <laughs> it's been over 10 years and I want to do something new. I have some new ideas and telemedicine is fantastic, um, but I, I miss, you know, getting my hands more and having toys that patients can be, you know, using for therapeutics or diagnostics. And that's not always possible um, if you're seeing someone and they're not coming into your office every time. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I, I actually started personal training on Skype back in 2009. So talk about being ahead of the curve. And that was, <laughs> I have to give credit where credit's due though. That was my client, Dr. Lisa Gelber, who's actually in Scottsdale, Arizona, because as a personal trainer, she was like, okay, I want you to be my trainer, but I was here in California and she was in Arizona. And so she said, would you be willing to do Skype? And I said, well, I'll try it. And then I could see the same exact things I could see with my clients here you have to just know what you're looking for. And I thought, oh, okay, this is easy. And so that when COVID hit and then I sort of transitioned, I mean, I was already doing it. I was already, in fact, my partner, Doug, he was my client. He lived in Baltimore when we met in 2017, he became my client early 2018. And I was his personal trainer for 10 sessions in Baltimore. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of, you know, when you want to work with someone 
you use your technology as best you can to be able to make that happen. So uh, one final thing I just want you to touch upon for those people who are going to definitely check out your podcast, The Sciences of Healing, and look at the uh, Bioregulatory Medicine Institute's website and go down any rabbit hole they want. <laughs> if you If you had to list a few things off the top of your mind or top of your head based on the clients that you've worked with and the patients and you know, people as a whole. I mean, it sounds like detoxification is like one of the biggest things that you might recommend that people be on top of or be using regularly. Correct me if I'm wrong. What other things, if you had to list like two or three things that you think everybody needs to either look at or work on or incorporate, incorporate no matter where you are in your health journey, what would they be? So yes to detox. And I just want to say one other thing because bioregulatory medicine another big difference is that we look at the extracellular matrix or the internal milieu or the biological terrain or whatever you want to call it but basically it's the fascia it's the lymph it's the ground substance it's the spaces between the cells and so most of medicine is very focused on the cell getting ATP production, the DNA, getting the um, riboflavin or the CoQ10 or the alpha lipoic acid or whatever it is into the cell. But if you don't have a healthy soup that those cells are soaking in, then it's kind of like, again, if you don't clean up the mouth, we can work hard all day, but if we're not getting rid of the focal infection, it's gonna be very difficult. And so that's a big difference that we pay attention to is cleansing out the extracellular matrix. So yes, detoxification, but so much more than that, because again, detoxification, a lot of times is just thought, oh, I have mercury, so I'll take some chelating agents or, oh, I have glyphosate, which we probably all do. I'll take some chelating agents and so forth. But we have to drain the organs. We have to make sure before we even detox that things are moving, that this extracellular matrix, this highway, the lymphatic system is open and flowing. And you'd be amazed at just even doing that how much better people feel. So yes, it is unfortunate. Maybe at some point I could say to a patient, like, let's see if you're toxic, but now it's like, well, let's just see how toxic you are and how your body is or isn't able to handle it. Um, because some people detox better than others. So that's really important. I think um, what else? So that kind of, I just, I just cheated and encompassed a lot in the question of one thing. Um, but I think to me, mindfulness and breathing and presence and joy is, it's the best medicine around. And so learning how to regulate your nervous system, learning how to be present, learning how to extract the goodness in the profound, but also the mundane. There's so much beauty all around us. And if we are not present, if we don't learn how to be in the moment, we miss it. So that would be another really big thing. And then I, I, I just think lifestyles, so I'm going to cheat again, <laughs> but the lifestyle things, the hydration, the diet, the movement, the sleep, the community, the air, the nature, like all those things, you know, how we live, how we think, those go such a long, long way and we often forget them. And then yes, of course, replacing the missing nutrients and balancing the hormones and all those things, but we can't do one without the other. And I, I really, if you take nothing else from this, like just contemplating and thinking about, you know, how is that married together? in my life and how are my thoughts affecting my body and vice versa. Beautiful. No, that's great. And I agree with you and on the presence and being in the moment and, and sucking the marrow out of life point of view, interpretation, all the emotional things. Cause that is a, that part of that is taking the time to be present. And so I love doing my live events because people have to come out of their normal habitual way of being 
and look at life differently and be in a different space and be in their bodies differently and slow down, even though it's always usually really, you know, busy and there's a lot of things going on, but then it's taking that, you know, cellular experience back into your regular life and then comparing, oh, wow, I'm really not in my body. I'm not present at all. And I need more of that. So all right. Well, I know we could talk longer on this. Uh, I'm hoping everyone's going to go check out the science of self-healing and uh, the links are in the show notes. Dr. Sharon, thank you so much. This has been uh, fun and I am going to um, contact you after this for some other questions. So I hope anybody else will do the same. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me.